If you love all things Titanic, you've come to the right place. Join me for this walking tour of Southampton, England, the point of Titanic's departure on April 10th, 1912. The majority of the ship's crew were from here, and only a small few ever saw home again. Hundreds of Southampton households lost a family member that fateful night, and there is perhaps no place else on Earth where the tragedy still resonates as it does here. For many, the sinking of the Titanic is an epic historical maritime disaster. For others, a beloved piece of pop culture and film history. But here, in Southampton, it was real. It was a painful event that shattered families and left no one in this town truly untouched. Come walk through history with me as I explore the Titanic sites of Southampton. Hey, good morning from London's Waterloo Station. It's a little before 8 a.m. and I'm about to get on a train to go to Southampton to do the Titanic Trail. So excited, I've been wanting to go here since I can't even remember when. So it's gonna be about an hour and 15 minutes on the train to get there, so let's go. This is literally a Titanic nerd's dream come true. I'm finally here in Southampton. I have been weirdly obsessed with the Titanic since I was what? Maybe like three or four years old? As far back as I can remember. I'm going to do the Titanic Trail today, which is a self-guided walk around Southampton that takes you to various historical sites that had to do with the passengers and the crew, where people stayed before they got on the ship, kind of all different spots that are associated with the Titanic and its maiden voyage. The first stop is going to be the Sea and City Museum, and then after that, I'm going to start my walk around the city. Just walking around outside the Sea and City Museum, waiting for it to open. Should open up in a few minutes. This museum actually covers the overall maritime history of Southampton. It's not just a Titanic museum. Of course, I am most, mostly interested in the Titanic portion of the museum, but I'm definitely going to check out the rest of it, learn a little bit more about the city and its maritime history, because other than the Titanic, I actually don't know a whole lot in general um, about the history of this area. So it'll be pretty cool. I'll learn a little bit today. And then after I'm done with the museum, I'm going to start my walk around town, visiting all the other sites. And then hopefully, fingers crossed at the end of the day, I'm going to take a ferry across the inlet here. Um, it's only about a 15 minute ride, but from what I have read from that ferry, you can actually see the berth where the Titanic set sail from. Uh, you can't walk into it today because it is a working port. Um, and the berth today is used by freighters. So regular people can't just like walk up to it and check it out but supposedly you can see it if you take this ferry. So we're gonna try that a little bit later on today. But it's such a thrill to finally be here. Yay, let's get started. So I just finished the museum. It has a lot of kind of like in the beginning general wall, basic wall exhibits with like really, you know, kind of basic um, facts for people that don't know very much about the incident. Um, but the thing that's really cool about this museum that it does that obviously other museums don't is that it really ties into the local history. Um, you learn a lot about um, how the town was affected by the disaster, um, you know, where all the people lived, where all the workers came from, what their lives were like. And uh, to me, that part was really interesting. They also had a lot of really um, unique documents that I'd never seen anywhere else. Things like, um, you know, telegraphs and death certificates and checks and just like really specific old documents um, that I haven't seen in any other Titanic exhibitions that I've been to. So that was really cool. The best part of the museum was being able to learn about the disaster through a local lens. You know, there are plenty of Titanic exhibitions all over the world, but there are really only four places that have local tie-ins. Obviously the ship set sail from here, then it stopped in Cherbourg, France, and then it stopped in Queenstown, Ireland before it set sail. It was built in Belfast. So those are really the four places where you can actually um, learn about the disaster through the local lens, and that's definitely a unique part of coming to Southampton and coming to this museum. the Titanic Trail. 
I am inside the Civic Center, and this is a memorial that commemorates the two British Sea Post officers and three American colleagues, all who died when the ship was lost. And the plaque was actually originally made from a spare propeller donated by Harlan and Wolf. I had to go into a public building and ask for directions to find this, which was a little awkward, but I did it. The Civic Center also has the Titanic Book of Remembrance, which commemorates the Southampton victims of the Titanic. I found my third stop on the Titanic Trail. This is the Titanic Musicians Memorial. This is actually a replica. The original was destroyed during the Second World War and it depicts a woman where you can see grieving the sinking. And then these are the first few bars of Nearer My God to Thee, which is, as the legend goes, the song that they were playing as the ship went down. It's got the names of the band played on until the end. And that name at the top at the middle, W. Hartley, that was Wallace Hartley, that was the band's leader. This is the fourth stop, the Titanic Engineer Officers Memorial. It commemorates the engineer officers, none of whom survived the sinking. It says, to the memory of the engineer officers of the RMS Titanic, who showed their rich conception of duty and their heroism by remaining at their posts, 15th April, 1912. If you look real closely at the names inscribed, you can see at the bottom, a famous one, Thomas Andrews. He was the architect of the ship. I'm walking down into the old town to go to my next stock, and I walk past this building that just randomly says the Titanic on the side. Not sure why. We've made it to the fifth stop on the Titanic Trail. This is the Titanic Crew Memorial. It was unveiled in 1915 and it was paid for by the subscriptions of friends and family of the crew and commemorates all the stewards, the sailors, and the firemen who died in the disaster. It's actually located inside the ruins of this old church from the uh, 13th century that was partially destroyed during the Second World War. It's kind of a neat spot. It's a bit unfortunate that they've got the memorial behind this fence. It's a little bit hard to see it. All right, time to head out. And go find stop number six. I have to say, I think walking around this city and, and seeing all these memorials, one of the things that it does is it really humanizes the disaster. You know, the sinking of the Titanic has become, you know, such a part of uh, pop culture almost that I think we sometimes forget that it was an actual tragedy with, you know, actual people who lost their lives and families that were destroyed. We don't think about that very much anymore. And so walking around and and seeing the, all the memorials to the disaster really I think, humanizes it a lot. We have arrived at our sixth stop on the Titanic Trail. Uh, today this is a casino, but back in 1912 this was actually the railway terminus. This was the station closest to the dock. So everybody who was coming into Southampton via rail to get on the Titanic, that is where they got off. You can definitely see how this might have been a railway station back in the day. It kind of does have that look to it. I'm headed towards the back of the casino. Yeah, you can definitely tell this was a railway station. This is where the platforms used to be. This is where they got off to get on the ship. That's incredible. Actually, walk in their footsteps. Stop number seven on the Titanic Trail. This is the Southwestern House. Today, these are apartments, but back in 1912, this was the hotel where a lot of the Titanic's wealthiest passengers spent their last night before getting on the ship. Uh, Thomas Andrews stayed here, the Titanic's architect, as did the infamous J. Bruce Ismay, who was the president of the White Star Line. This is actually where they stayed the night before they got on the ship. It's so wild. It makes a lot of logistical sense too, because the old railway, is actually just right there. I imagine they probably even walked. I mean, it's only a couple hundred feet. 
I'm on the other side now of the Southwestern House and you can see that the old train station was really right behind it. So it makes sense that this is where they all stayed. Stop number eight on the Titanic Trail, the Graves Public House. You can tell by the photo up there that they are well aware of their history. This pub actually dates back to the 1850s and it was a favorite for uh, some of the members of the Titanic's crew. So the crew actually used to drink here. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna need to come back here for a drink later. Not an official spot on the Titanic Trail, but I might need to come back here later for dinner. Stop number nine on the Titanic Trail, the former sailor's home. It opened as a sailor's home in 1909 to provide a temporary accommodation for seamen while they were in port. And actually, several of the Titanic crew stayed here prior to sailing. And the majority of those did not survive the sinking. Stop number 10 on the Titanic trail was a little tricky because they moved it from where my map told me it was. I got stopped by a uh, port guard asking me where I was going. But we found it. Uh, so this is the Ocean Gate Memorial. The Titanic sailed from uh, nearby Berth 43 on her maiden voyage. So they just have this little plaque here to commemorate. Stop number 11 on the Titanic Trail is Canute Chambers. Or back in 1912, this was actually the Southampton headquarters of the White Star Line. Here's the memorial plaque commemorating the spot where people would come and wait for news at the office. So this is where all the people stood 110 years ago, waiting outside of the White Star Line offices to find out if their loved ones had survived the sinking. And then when the names of the survivors were telegraphed to the White Star Line office up here, they would put them on these railings. 549 Southampton people were killed. Stop number 12 on the Titanic Trail is the former Docks Branch Post Office. At the turn of the century, this building housed the Docks Post Office and Telegraph Office. And actually it was here that the Titanic's mail was sorted before being loaded onto the ship. all the way to stop 13 before I hit my first little roadblock. This is St. Joseph's Church, and inside the church is an oak table which has a plaque in memory of the restaurant workers who lost their lives in the disaster. Unfortunately, the church is not open. You can see here on the outside of the church, they have a little note about the memorial table inside, which I am unfortunately not going to be able to see today. That's okay though. It was a lovely walk. This is a very nice street. So that was the last stop on the official Titanic Trail. I am now going to do my added stop 14, which is to go for that ferry ride. Hopefully I can get a glimpse of the berth where she set sail from. sitting in it called uh, NYK, um, which is kind of funny because it's almost kind of sounds like New York, which is where the Titanic was headed. But um, wow, that was absolutely, without a doubt, the highlight of the day. I mean, being on a boat, sailing away from Southampton, looking at the berth where she left from, 
had my headphones in, I was listening to Near My God to the like, it's maybe a little cheesy, but I actually got kind of emotional. I, well, I did, I really got emotional. It was just, what an unbelievable experience to be in that position, you know, sailing away, following in the footsteps of, of the ill-fated liner all those years ago. It was, you know, for any Titanic buff to be in that position was pretty special. So um, I'm so glad I came. I'm glad I got the opportunity to do that. I'm glad I got the opportunity to have that experience and to feel like I was, you know, following in the footsteps of history, I guess. I don't, I don't really know how to describe it. It was, um, it was really special. So yeah, that was stop 14. <laughs> Save the best for last. I am slowly meandering back towards the station to take the train back to London. I'm um, walking slowly because my feet feel like they're gonna fall off, but uh, <laughs> it was well worth it. So in the end, I am not going to make it to any of those pubs or the restaurant that I found, but that's okay. Um, you know, it is obviously coming here today and doing the Titanic Trail and seeing the birth was, you know, been on my bucket list since I was, I don't know, three, four years old. <laughs> um, and I'm in my late thirties now. So it's, it's been a long time coming for me to get here. Uh, but another thing that I've always wanted to do is to sail in her footsteps. So to um, take the Queen Mary II um, across the ocean from Southampton to New York. Um, I've always wanted to do that, haven't gotten to it yet, but um, whenever I get to do that, you know, that ship does leave from Southampton. So before I get on, I'll have a meal at that restaurant, have a drink at that pub, and uh, start the voyage off right. So I found the front of that building I was looking at it's a pub. Okay, add this to the list of places that I need to drink at. All right, back at Southampton Central Station, just waiting for the train to take me back to London Waterloo. Oh my goodness, it has been a long, long day. Um, thanks for coming along with me. I had an incredibly epic day. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to come here and to see all of the history that I've been reading about since I was a little girl. It was really, really special. So that's it. Um, I hope you guys had fun. I know I had an amazing day and 